Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills that they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In this lesson, I want to spend a bit more time talking about some smaller syntax elements in the C-sharp language that you need to master to understand how a properly formed line of code is constructed. So in a previous lesson, I said something to the effect that just like you use a period at the end of a, pr a properly formed English sentence, you use a semicolon in C-sharp uh, to denote that you want to end a complete thought. And I may have even briefly referred to C-sharp syntax as having nouns and verbs and so forth to extend that analogy. Well, I want to elaborate on that just a little bit here and clarify what I meant in this lesson. So let's start off by describing the basic building blocks. Statements are complete thoughts in C-sharp, uh, or complete sentences. Statements are made up of one or more expressions, and expressions are made up of operators and operands. Uh, and we've seen several expressions already. We've seen expressions like the ones on this slide uh, that, as we've been working through these lessons. Console.WriteLine, hello world. If user value equals one, uh, y equals x plus seven, my first string equals Bob, and there are many others. But each of these expressions have two things in common. They consist of operators and operands. Operands are things like objects, or for now, just think of classes like the console class. Uh, there are also things like variables or literal strings, and I suppose you could call these our nouns. Operators are things like the plus operator, which when working with numeric data was the addition operator. Uh, it could also be used with strings for the concatenation operator, uh, and I suppose you could call them the verbs. And so there's the equal sign, which we already noted means variable assignment. Also, whenever we worked with the if statement, we noted that the double uh, equal sign tests for equality. So there are other operators that we've seen, but you may not think of typically as an operator. For example, the opening and closing parentheses uh, is the operator for method invocation. Uh, like whenever you see this line of code, console.writeLine, open and close parentheses, we are actually invoking the read line method through the use of the open and closing parentheses. So what happened if you leave those off, if you ignore those parentheses? Well, then it changes the meaning of the code, and the C-sharp compiler may not understand and will possibly raise a compilation exception. Uh, another operator that you may not think of as an operator is that little dot or the period, which is the member access operator. Uh, using the console object, we were able to access the members, or in other words, the methods that belong to the console class by using the dot operator. As we learn more about classes uh, and objects uh, and object-oriented programming, we'll be using the dot operator a lot. Uh, I'm going to uh, have a whole lot more to say about object-oriented programming in a couple lessons from now. But uh, in these lessons, the key idea is that the dot operator is, in fact, an operator. And there are quite a few operators, but as you start out, you probably know, need to know a couple of them. So let's focus on just a few that I think you're going to use 90% uh, of the time. Uh, and these will come rapid fire, but we're also going to add them to... Um, our memorization work, and, and hopefully you'll recall these whenever you need them. If not, you can refer back to this lesson uh, for a quick reminder. So I've created a, a nonsensical uh, project called Operators, Expressions, and Statements, and I call it nonsensical because it really doesn't do anything. Uh, you can download this if you'd like from wherever you're currently watching the video or where you originally downloaded it from. Uh, it really just demonstrates the use of the various operators. So uh, at the very beginning here, I do want to point out something interesting that I've done that I haven't done up to this point, and that's when I declared uh, the, uh, the variables that I'm going to use throughout this main method. Uh, I did, like, did it like so, int x, y, a, and b, separating them each with commas. So this is just a, a real quick, easy way to uh, create uh, or declare several variables all in one line of code. I typically don't recommend that you do this, um, but you can, and you might see examples of this in use. We've already seen the assignment operator, the single equal sign. 
Um, there are other mathematical operators, obviously the addition operator we're already familiar with, but then there's also the subtraction operator, which you would guess would be the minus sign or the single dash on your keyboard. Uh, the asterisk is the multiplication operator. The forward slash between two numer numeric values is the division operator. And then there are many operators used to evaluate values. We already looked at the two equal signs next to each other to evaluate for equality. But there's also the greater than operator, so make sure that x is greater than y. If so, then execute that block of code. There's the less than operator, which is the arrow pointed in the opposite direction. The greater or equal to operator, the less than or equal to operator. So things that you would you would come to expect if you've taken any kind of uh, simple math class, well, they're in use here in C-sharp as well. And then there are conditional operators uh, that can be used to enhance an evaluation. So you can kind of uh, put them together. So for example, there's the conditional AND operator. So I can use the double ampersand to say it must pass this condition and must pass this condition. If both of those are true, then uh, execute this block of code. There's also below it you can see the conditional OR operator which is just two single pipes. On my keyboard there that pipe symbol is over the backslash character uh, on my keyboard above the enter key uh, but somewhere in that vicinity and so that will say uh, basically if X is greater than Y or A is greater than B then go ahead and execute this block of code. All right. And we've already taken a look at that inline conditional operator in a previous lesson. Um, we saw that we could assign a value to message based on this condition. Is x, in fact, equal to 1? If it is, and you can see here is the question mark, if that's true, then set message to car. Otherwise, set the variable message to the value boat. And then... Um, Finally, the member, member, max, uh, member access and method invocation operators like you see there. Okay, and again, this is not an exhaustive list, but you probably should memorize the ones in this, in this little code example at a minimum. Uh, you really need these about, like I said, 90, maybe as much as 99% of the time. Uh, you can expand your vocabulary of other operators and keywords and so forth over time. All right, so in each of these cases that we just saw, an expression is made up of a combination of operands like literal strings, variables, objects like the console class, and so on, and operators like those we just looked at, the addition operator, string concatenation operators, um, conditional and or operators, and so on. And so you use expressions to form statements, which are how the actions or the instructions of an application are expressed. And we've already seen several great examples of statements so far uh, when we've written our applications. And you might say, well, where have I seen a statement before? Well, uh, think about the projects that we've created up to this point. Uh, for example, there are declaration statements like int x. Uh, in that case, that's all it takes to make a complete thought in C sharp. And then there are expression statements like my string equals then my first name plus my last name. Again, a complete thought. We're adding two values together and, and taking the new value and setting it as the value of my string. Or something like this, some value equals 3 times x divided by 100. In this case, notice that the, um, the parentheses operator is used for um, uh, the, uh, the order of operations, just like you would in any mathematical formula. So first, take 3 times x, and then divide by 100. All right, so in each of these cases, the expression is evaluated and then assigned. And um, there are decision statements. We've already seen one example so far. Uh, if x is greater than y, then z equals bob. Uh, and this might look a little foreign at first, but if I separate it out into individual lines and wrap some curly braces around it, you might recognize it in this form. Uh, basically the exact same thing. So all we needed to do in this case was to add the curly braces, but essentially the same line of code. Again, new lines in white space don't matter to the compiler. They're just there for our own readability. And there are iteration statements, which I'm going to show you in a later lesson, and there are a couple of others. But basically these are the syntax rules of C Sharp. Now why am I telling you all of this? Because the syntax rules matter. 
For example, you can't just do this, x plus y, and expect it to work. The C-sharp compiler will look at you and say, what are you trying to do? Have you lost your mind? What do you want me to do with this? Uh, in situations like this, the IDE can actually catch these syntactical mistakes as compilation errors uh, even before you attempt to compile or run the application. So we would expect this to give us a red squiggly line. And now we can hover our mouse cursor over and it'll say only assignment call, increment, decrement, await, and new object expressions can be used as a statement. Okay, so um, again, that is developer speak for basically saying that you don't have a properly formed statement. It doesn't have the right uh, set of expressions and filled with operators and operands. So we're not really doing anything here. All right, there's no assignment going on. All right, so uh, for beginners, understand that there's a proper syntax, just like there's proper grammar in the English language. Uh, and just understanding that is a big step to solving your own problems whenever you're phrasing C-sharp instructions that the C-sharp compiler will accept. Okay, so let's recap the things that we talked about in this lesson. First of all, statements are complete instructions in C-sharp, and they consist of expressions. A statement is like a sentence in the English language, and the expressions are things like nouns and verbs. Actually, expressions are made up of operands and operators. So an operand is a thing, uh, is something like an object or a variable or a little, literal string. Uh, for now, just think of objects like the console class. That's an object. I suppose you could call these our nouns. Operators are like verbs. They act on the operands. And we spend a lot of time looking at examples of different operators that we'll come in contact with. Um, and we've already been using these operators for all sorts of purposes up until now. Even if we didn't identify them as operators, uh, we were still using them. Uh, and you have to memorize the operators. To start off, you might use a cheat sheet. However, in most cases, I think you'll be able to just think, what do I need to do here? And then, you know, and think and reason your way through the operators that you'll need in order to complete that statement, that, that complete thought in C sharp. So you might be thinking to yourself, next I need to add these two variables together and set them equal to this other variable. So I'm going to need the addition operator and the equality operator. I probably need a plus and an equal sign, right? Or something like, I need to evaluate whether this variable is greater than 100. Uh, I wonder if I can use just, or if I could just use the greater than symbol or if I need the greater than equal to symbol just like I used in my math class right so here again you would be able to just reason your way through think through what is the logical type of operator on my keyboard that I could use to, to do something and generally it will work and so operands are like variables and classes and strings and they're easy to remember the names of because you create those names yourself uh, you have to memorize the operators because they are the way that you do something meaningful with your operands that you define the names of. And so I just wanted to make those distinctions and help you get a firmer grasp on the language, the fact that there is a syntax uh, and there are syntax rules, just like there are syntax rules uh, in, in the English language, other languages of the world, uh, and they do dictate what's what's possible and why you get error messages sometimes um, when you uh, when you type in an, an a improperly formed line of code okay so great we'll see you in the next lesson thank you